We don't have the stick to itiveness, which is a word, to endure. Because we're not in step, we're not in sync. I told you, the kingdom, the root word for kingdom is the same word they use when they launch out to the deep. Same word, root word, bathos. It means step or uh, a pace. We're supposed to be in step. We're supposed to be in pace. Every time the utterance comes from God through this ministry, we should be in step. Not out of step, not misstep. In step, in sync. Oh, that's another group, man. In sync with God. I'm all right, I'm still saved. So we got to be in sync with God because the Bible said, how could two walk together lest they agree? Where is the agreement? It's the acknowledgement internally in my thinking. Every time I acknowledge a truth, an unction, a word, an inspiration, a, a, a progressive truth, anything that's coming outside the, le the letter, every time I submit my mental faculties to it, Remember, we talked about that some time ago. The word for awake is to recover our mental faculties. It's to bring it out of obscurity. All the words that the church would use, apocalypse and, and manifest and finero and all these other terms that is a litany of, I, don't, I, I tell prophets from down there, I don't know how they, mess, how they mess this up. But when you dissect this and you go to Blue Letter Bible and you start looking and you start shaking and sifting and searching, Shake it, sit in the search. You start seeing things, you're like, my God. And the perfect law of liberty, the perfect law of liberty, starts creating a groaning in the bowels of your heart. Every time you encounter truth, the residual of coming in contact, I'm going to put this in my notes later, but I'm going to say it now. The residual from coming in contact with God is this Gadara. Gadarite, this madman that went out to meet God, went out to meet God, uh, the, the word made flesh. That's what he went to meet. He didn't meet just Christ, the historical Jesus. He went to see Jesus Christ. He's, he went to see the volume of the book. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There was a strut in Jesus he knew was different. Yeah, well, come on. Because you got to understand, he was not attractive. So he wasn't blue eyed and long hair. He wasn't. Amen. He wasn't a Chris Evans. <laughs> All right. Amen. We know he wasn't white either. Come on. He was had dark skin. He wasn't an Idris Elba. <laughs> but he had, amen. His image was marred more than any man, so he didn't have anything that was appealing, but something within this Kadera, this get get right. We have no historical precedent to find out that he had any other form of contact with him. It was just enough for him to say, I'm ready, I'm done with the mountains, I'm done with the with the tombs, I'm done with my past, I'm done with trying to recycle, because that's what the enemy wants. He wants us to recycle our hurt, our pain. He wants us to keep doing what we've always done, trying to get different. He don't want you to do something different. He don't want you to start saying, you know what? They tripping. I ain't tripping. I ain't tripping no more. He don't want you. He wants you to say, oh, they tripping. I'm, I'm gonna, you know, the thug come out of you and you want to try to stand up. You know, all that other crazy stuff. Trying to, you know, prove a point. No, 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 no. No, no, we have nothing to prove. Yeah, I, I ain't got to keep dating you for four or five years to find out if you from... You, Trying to figure out if we're going to, you know, what else? <laughs> if it's going to connect. No, no, no. There's some things that we we don't even have to worry about the devil. We create bodily harm on ourselves. Our own preconceived ideologies has imprisoned us. And we can't move forward. When my Bible tells me the outward man perishes, that's what your Bible say too, by the way. <laughs> the outward man perishes. But the inward man 
is being renewed day by day. I take him for face value. Anybody want to take him for face value? I take God for his face value. He said he watched over his word and performed it. Yeah. It'll probably be the thing where he sent it. Yeah. So I had to tell myself over and over, in spite of my predicament, mm -hmm. I have a principle. Mm -hmm. Since I have a principle, I have a promise. If I have a promise, I'm going to have a process. <laughs> but once, um, once I come out of the process, I'm going to have a provision of the principle. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I tell myself, you have to talk to yourself and tell yourself, you know what? I I don't I I, I feel tired today. I really don't like myself so much for six months. I mean, I don't know about y'all. Some of y'all probably went on a cruise with yourself, but I, I wasn't getting in the boat. Hey, Amen. I can hear it. You can hear the whistle going, we're leaving the station. I'm not getting in. <laughs> Them high waters, man. I'm going to stay on the shore. Am I speaking to anybody? Oh, Y'all yeah. was going, huh? <laughs> no, 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 no. Because you had to reassess everything. Yeah, you, did. you find out what you really had. Oh, yeah. You can look around and find that out. Yeah. Every church in America lost people. Yeah. It ain't losing to COVID. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> because they didn't know what they were building. They didn't know. They didn't know what manner of man. But it's all a part of you. All these six months of God was allowing us to see what we were building. What kind of uh, uh, structure. Yeah. Trying to look and see, did we have foundation? We had plenty of foundational teaching, but did we really have a foundation? Yeah. We've had plenty of teaching on intimacy, but were we really intimate? So God wants to take us out of those silicos, the silico things that will cause us to be inconsistent, mm -hmm. just like he wanted to do with this young man. And God wants to, he wants us to be in the mountain, but he don't want us to have to come down. God has given us a higher perspective. That's what it means to be in the mountain. I don't, we don't have you, we can't, let me say this, because it's in my heart. We can't legitimize our personal biases and call our preferences perspectives. We can't legitimize our own personal biases, which are really a cloak for preferences. And we try to somehow transmutate that stuff and call it perspective. No, 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 no. We don't have a perspective. We have a perspective of one. And it's imperative for me to have the mind of Christ and find out what God is saying about the situation. Because if he has not said, if I have no witness, then it is a preference. <laughs> okay, let's say it again. If God is silent, if you have no clear-cut directives, if there is a lack of instruction on something that's near and dear to your heart, and you have no witness from the Spirit of God, then trust me, it is a preference. And preferences are good because, to be, to be honest with you, God is into preferences. <laughs> I don't know why I'm here. This is part of the tools. How do you know God is into preferences? Yeah. Because it has to do with choice. Yeah. It has to do with likes. Yeah. It has to do with being comfortable. Mm -hmm. It's a part of who you are. Yeah. Come on, I got preferences. Yeah. I mean, I prefer to have like 500 people. Yeah. I mean, that is my preference. Yeah. I don't need a thousand, just half. <laughs> but then too, in that preference, I might still have probably a good baker's dozen in the 500. So it ain't in the majority. They do what it needs to do if they're committed. So we all have our personal preferences. I wanted to be 6'2". I look at the grandbaby and I said, dang, I wish I had some of that. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I'd be like, man, if I had some of that, ooh, 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 ooh. I'll 
can't say I'm going to be famous. <laughs> Amen. I had a little leaping ability in my legs, too. I'm like, see, I'll probably, you know, get up there. That would be my preference, to be able to dunk good. Not able to dunk with a tennis ball. <laughs> so we all have our preferences, right? I'm sure we'll probably would probably tell you she wanted the guy was probably six six six, you know, six pack, six digits, and six feet tall. You know what I'm saying? Everybody got preferences. She you know she's gonna get one five eight, you know, pretty close to five nine. So. But we have our preferences. But if those preferences somehow, somewhere, if we don't bring them to God, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. They become tombs. Because God, if God is not a part of it, if God hasn't initiated it, if it's not coming out from God, it has no life. It has no ability to self-contain. It become a husk. External stuff, right? So, we, 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 we need to know that God wants us to be free. He don't want us to go up and down. He wants us to be able to abide and dwell in the high places, not in the tombs, not to be fixated over our past, over things that we could have, would have, should have. That's some of the things that are tombs, could have, would have, should have. Regret. Anybody got any regret? Yeah, we all got regret. You know, those are the things. If we don't allow, if we don't allow the Holy Spirit to speak to those things, then we will continue to live and operate in Regret. But when Christ becomes your hope and you allow him to do what he needs to do on the inside of you, then God can take all of that regret, all of that brokenness, all of that hopelessness, and he can restore you and cause you to come to the point where you can run towards him and come out of the tombs, come out of the tombs, come out of isolation. Amen. How many know God wants us to come out of isolation? He do. He wants us to come out of isolation. That's another element of tombs is isolation. Living in isolation. Living in exile. Living outside the community. Yeah, it was outside. Outside the community. Couldn't be connected. We already know. Couldn't hang around people. Better to change couldn't. No man could tame him. We'll talk about that next week. He couldn't be in community. And I found out in church, churches like this, churches across the globe, <laughs> you have some people that are yeah, not necessarily people related. Well, they are, because all of us, most of us are. Most people, you very seldom you find anybody that's just an island to themselves. I mean, we can get some. I've known some that just ain't got no friends. And all the bridges are burned. You know, nobody want to hang out. You know, sometimes it ain't just everybody else. Sometimes it's just you. You can't blame everybody for your dysfunction. Somewhere along the line, you got to own it. And look within yourself and say, okay. I done lost five friends in five years. Something's wrong. What did happen? We can't live in isolation. We can't live breaking covenant, breaking relationships. When the Bible says in Romans, I didn't give y'all no scriptures, but the Bible says in Romans 15, 5 to 7, it talks about how 12 and 4, uh, 12, 4, 5, uh, verse 4 and 5, and then 16 and 17, and then we'll get out of here. How much time we got left? How much time we got on? Oh, okay. It says that you may be one. That's six, though. Did I? Five, 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 five. Give me five. Five, five, five. Now, the God of patience and consolation grant unto you what? Be who? Be mixed up. <laughs> okay. Be like minded one to another. According to Christ Jesus. So. That's why the first century church, everybody talk about they, they, they walked in some immeasurable amount of healings and, and the, there was a demonstration of the hand of God, but 
They had all things to come. They didn't live in tombs. They didn't live in exile. They went house to house. They were daily in the temple. Breaking bread, fellowship, prayer, attended to the apostles' doctrine. Now, am I right, y'all? That's what y'all Bible says. In case you haven't read it in a while, in Acts 2, it talks about, amen, it talks about how, how they enjoy symbiotic relationships, meaningful relationships, palpable relationships, valid relationships. Like me. Yeah. I don't like phony relationships. I like real. Yeah. It's too much work trying to try figure if you're on my side or not. Yeah. Then you got to figure out how much to tell, how much to speak, how much to. Who got time for that? And but, by the way, even among saints, you got you to gotta use uh, prudence. You just can't just tell everybody all your business because some folks can't carry it. Yeah. It becomes a liability to you and an asset for them. Become a weapon of mass destruction. But normally, as it relates to covenantal relationship, God has not desired for us to sit in isolation. His, so we got to know that God has not wildly, in other words, the whatever being articulated and everything that's being dispensed out of the pulpit and the different uh Thoughts and principles that are being released, the core values and the convictions that are being laid out in principle, <clears throat> each and every one of us have to buy the truth and sell it now. We gotta make up a mind, make up a mind, I'm gonna make it personable. It has to be tailor-made, not by individual, but by corporateness. So there should be a banner over real board the national ministry. That we're like-minded. That we mind the same things. That's what it means. That our, our, our preferences belong to the Lord. Hmm? Right? That we've been, we've been so persuaded privately because that's where it's going to come out of. It's not going to come on Sundays. It's going to come when you get in the cleft of the rock. And you start seeking after the things of God. And you tell God, God, I need you to take the, this guy is so excited about all the time I hear his voice. He's using certain keywords that keep haunting me. I, the, the light bulb has not come on yet. I just can't understand it in this moment, but I need the great interpreter to help me. He ain't gonna tell you nobody gonna tell you. Because I help you. What he gonna tell you? First, he's gonna tell you you already got it. Okay. If you go to God and say, God, I need you, and that's a noble act. We need to do that. I've done it. I've gone on behalf of of, of situations in my life. I had to go to God on. I went to God on Apostle Beaver. Apostle Tim. I mean, all 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 of my, the ones that was connected to me that were trying to give me information that didn't register. I had to go to God on. I didn't go to God because I was trying to prove him wrong. I went to God because it was important and something was bearing witness with my spirit, man, because deep was calling the deep and it was soliciting an activity from me that I was uncomfortable with. Of the spirit. I needed the spirit of God to verify the information that was being extended to me. This is apostolic kingdom. This is how you relate to the things of the spirit, y'all. So we got to be like-minded one to another, right? Okay, next verse. That you may be with one mind, one mouth, glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Whereby, wherefore, receive ye one another as Christ also received us into the glory of God. So it's not isolation. We're not in the mountain in the tombs. We're not outside of community. We have not disconnected from the body. We have not been maimed by our own choices. We're not reverted back to old patterns and old mindsets. We're not necessarily being stripped by old ideologies 
we understand that we have a responsibility not just to ourselves, but we have a responsibility to us. So I believe one of the biggest schemes of the enemy is to break covenant relationships in the body of Christ. I think he knows what we are capable of as one even better than we do sometimes. I believe that. He, he, he's not uh, um, omniscient. So he doesn't, he, you can't see into our future. Could I help y'all? Yeah. So you can, uh, I'm going to help you to stop employing the devil. <laughs> I mean, so, cause some of us got him on paycheck, payroll. <laughs> Sir, we do. We got the devil on paper and we don't even try to figure out why the hell he's showing up at our house. He, he's not omniscient. He don't see everything. He don't know everything. He's not omnipresent. He's not omnipotent. That's God's sovereign attributes. But he ain't stupid either. What he do? He started listening to what we say privately. Oh, awful apostle. Okay. <laughs> Let's go see how we can say, hey guys, come listen to this. Come <laughs> listen to this dude over here. Come listen to this girl. Listen, she just sweat. <laughs> see, most of the stuff that that you guys notice is afterwards. Nobody knows the conversations I have with people privately or inbox them, trying to exhort them. I, I felt like a car salesman for six months. Felt so cheap. I'm gonna be just free. Right? I love you. <laughs> I gotta tell everybody to remember certain things. When you have a priority, you don't have to be reminded. Because you already know it comes to your mind. So I have to say, hey, you know what? Don't forget about us. We got a building over here. What's that for? I get all the money, duh. <laughs> I felt like a, uh, well, we got a kid here, but I don't <laughs> That's what I felt like. You know what I'm saying? Four letter word. Not a leader. Manager. I had to manage the house. I had to make sure we were okay. You are right. You on board? Mm. Not <clears throat> when his history trumps everything. History trumps all of that. History. You, you gotta listen to the you gotta listen to that lens and say history. Mm -hmm. Anything comes in and say my past is great. History. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. I saw your pastor, he's trying to hit on so much history. <laughs> history, man. That don't end, right? right? I thought, no, you can't tell me my pastor said you nothing. Right. I don't even play that. Mm. I don't, it's dangerous, man. Right. Folks gonna make it back. And I've been so persuaded of my future. When you're convinced of your future, then you don't flirt with your present. That's the that's the greatest. You want to detox and get a deterrent, get stuck. How many people you cut off? Because it don't look like my future. Yeah. And you, at the same time, you want to spend all your energy. You won't waste all of your money. You don't have to get outside of character. You don't have to do something that violates your conscience. Jesus seen it. Jesus said it, right? Jesus said, I'm going to endure my cross. For what? Why did he endure the cross? Because of who? <laughs> he said, I'll give up my blood. He said, I'll su sweat great drops of blood. I'll turn the cup away three times, but nevertheless, because he had a conversation. He said, Jesus prayed in John 17, the first three verses, 
Father responded back to him, I'm going to give you the glory that you have with me from the foundations. So he was able to go and do what he had to do in the Garden of Gethsemane. That's how you know you can endure a trial and stop leaving church. <laughs> oh, I know they watch. <laughs> stop trying to figure out, well, I think my time is up. No, your time is, come on now. <laughs> you get long to Timmy, you get endurance, you get patience, and you, 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 you know what I'm saying? You, you're soluble. You, you got <sighs> density. You, 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 you got weight in the spirit. Because every action is a reaction in the spirit realm. So while we may be in four doors of these four doors, four walls, and the privacy of our own home, nobody see the spirit realm. See. I'm very well at that because deliverance before he gave me keys. Because it brought discipline to me. It was through deliverance that I had a healthy respect for what I don't see. So then when God started giving me information that I didn't have, or what I didn't know, I won't squander it. Because he put a compass on the inside of me. So I don't care if people say deliverance ain't for the day. I, 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 that, that, look. Just because you can try to absolve it through teaching don't mean it, it passed away. Right, right, right. They still exist. I know they exist. I see them in people's faces. <laughs> I hear their voices. I was talking to someone this week. Well, two weeks ago, I was telling them. And um, my nephew. I got a bunch of you. I don't know which one it is. <laughs> my nephew was talking to me, you know, I'm dirty close there. Um, I need to get to the road. I need to get to 12. Uh, anyway, yeah. I was trying to tell him, I said, man, I said, dude, you sound just like your daddy. Just like him. This familiar spirit was coming through him. And his dad had been dead for two years, and yet now that spirit is using his body. Mm -hmm. So I've been praying for him because I know what his dad went through. Wow. His dad actually had a demon in him. They tried to jump him out of the building on Western Avenue. Well. That's how I got into deliverance. Because he broke down pastors and didn't know what to do with him. They know how to, <laughs> I'm sorry. They didn't cast no devil out of him. Had to go way up to Liberty Temple. Thank God for Apostle Cliff returning. Yes, sir. That's the one cast the devil out of him. Nobody in this region would mess with it. Sprinkling salt, sprinkling pe pepper. It was some years ago, but I could hear <coughs> the recall of that spirit, uh, the recantation of that spirit uh, in my nephew. So my wife told me, she said, you need to get him. Yes. He talked to him. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? So I got mad as H-E oh. hockey puck, hockey pucks. Yes. Yeah, crickly, crickly. Because now it becomes personal yeah. and personal. Because now you're dealing with bloodline stuff. Yeah. But that realm still exists. Yes. Even without my acknowledgement. Yeah. In fact, it is even emboldened and strengthened through your negligence. Yes. Yeah. Now your, your, your participation strengthens. They get braggadocious yeah. and bold. You have to shut it down. Yes. There's some stuff that needs to be shut down. Yes. Mm. Some things that need to be shut down in our children. Mm. It ain't just Johnny. Johnny ain't supposed to be like that. That's right. I got a grandson. <coughs> my grand <coughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. My grandson is king, he'll tell you. <laughs> he know when I'm coming as Papa. <laughs> or I'm coming as Apostle Steve. I look at him and say, uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he'd come there, all of a sudden, he was he had milk and magnesium, he'd be all of a sudden, he'd, he'd, he'd sober up. He know when you mean. Because I'm dealing with them spirits. Yeah. 
They're not going to ravage your life. It's not, I don't watch it do what it's done with your daddy and your granddaddy and your great granddaddy. But it's not going to happen on my watch. And I ain't saying it for y'all to clap. This is just real deal. This is just the way I feel. Because it's an, I take it as an assignment now. And trust me, it is very uncomfortable. <laughs> we can't just pick up the gun and stuff. <laughs> just do what we want to. It's uncomfortable. I told God that. And, 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 and Elder Bless tell you, I keep and scream. Mm. I ain't want it. <laughs> God told me, he said, you pray for it. Not on it. Wow. Wow. I didn't know it. I prayed for it. That wasn't what I thought. It my, wasn't my preference. <laughs> it was God's priority. <laughs> but I told him, I talked to him last night. I said, I give you the rest of my life. Yeah. Come on. Life. <laughs> I said, I want to be there when he graduated. I want to be there when he's so and so. So when I went to the doctor, I told my wife, I said, Yeah, she said, You're going to follow up? Evidently, yes. We're going to follow up. We're going to do everything we need to do. This tabernacle would be today. We need to come in the water because I got to be here for the long haul. <laughs> yep. I have something that's been committed to my stewardship. Yes. And I feel that way about my, my kids. Same thing. Same way. Well, well yeah. everybody all right? Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm boring y'all with my stuff this morning. I'm going to give y'all a whole boatload of stuff. And yeah, it's the truth, though. That's the way I think. Okay, that's that's it. Okay, I, I I really believe that God wants to do something, bring us out of isolation. I'm everywhere. I don't know. I just I'm just gonna stop. Man, it used to be to massacre this rest of this stuff because I hate to be redundant and come back and repeat it. So, but we're gonna look at a couple of places in Romans and find out God is not. We we if we've been made to drink of the self same spirit, right? Harmony, wholeness, oneness, those are not just peripheral words. You know what I'm saying? Words that out here, you know what I'm saying? You can just catch this peripheral, just, you know, just a little bit out of the line of sight. Those are not just peripheral words. Those are words, as I said earlier, symbiotic words that are supposed to be included in the in, in very fabric of who we are. Joints, ligaments. These are internal things and internal thoughts that is necessary for us. If we're going to come out of the tombs, I'm tired of seeing folks. Giving guys six weeks, right? And 46 of the other weeks is in the tomb. That is not what Jesus came to do. Jesus wants to bring us beyond the limitations of our own weaknesses. The day and how he was able. This, this is a powerful story, y'all. None of y'all did that dysfunctional. There's hope for you. If God can help a man that had legion, he can help us. So all of the generalities and the principles that we can see as we dissect those 17 verses, but we we got two more shots, two more, was the, three more weeks for this month, hopefully. Uh, whatever, we got time. <laughs> and we can look at this story and grab a hold of things so we can use them as a, as a tool to build correctly. Because that's what God wants us to have, y'all. And I think It's a handicap as a leader. I'm not selfish. I'm not sitting around here trying to get, you know, people to try to do anything distinctively different than building something for us. I'm not promulgating my own theories or trying to get you to 
make a you no know, do like the Tower of Babel or build a name for me. I never I never enforced that. I never projected that. I've always projected even in the beginning when we were the Lord our values. That's why he gave me from the beginning, before we had our first service, he gave me a body of believers being built up. Right? Anybody remember? Yes, sir. Built up together for what? Habitation of God. Through his spirit that what? That the pastor. Oh, no. the, who? Not my glory. His glory. Right? In the earth. I've never deviated from it. That's always been in the oracles that I release. I'm always beseeching the house, beseeching each and every one of you. Speaking to the joint, speaking to the limit, ligaments, speaking to the living stones, telling you God wants to fitly frame you into the very fabric of this ministry. That we are kingdom, apostolic people. And then we can't continue to allow religion to hijack our future. We can't. Father, we bless you for this work. We just ask that you continue to. You have an expected end for us. You have a, a reward for us. We, we know that that reward is to be changed in the twinkling of an eye. That reward is, even as John would put it, that when he shall appear, we shall appear like him, or we shall appear with him. So that's not necessarily something in our future that is happening even now. Even under the sound of the voice you've given me, the platform you've given me, the wisdom you've given me to speak to your people. They belong first and foremost to you. You but allow them to be here on loan to come to aid and assist. Not to aid and abate, but aid to, and to assist the vision that's in this house. That we can fulfill our assignment corporately. It's never been about me. It's never been about I, myself. It's always been about us and what you call us to do collectively. Not individually. We know that individual, collectively, we are only as strong as we are individually. So we're not honoring the culture and the, the, and the the core values in the house, then of course we're not going to have the conviction that we are one body, that we have one.